Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am struggling to keep up with my weekly upload schedule, so this is a relatively low effort video on my end. Today we will be making a Bang Dream tier list on how much I like each of the characters in all 7 bands. I am not including Glitter Green or any of the other franchises like Argonauts because I frankly do not care about them. So we are just going over the 7 main bands that are available in the mobile game. This is the default look when you first open the tier list, but I have made my own modifications to it. Instead of top 3, we have Kira Kira Doki Doki. And instead of love, we have Hakanai. Also, we have a like, neutral, and dislike, which is the same as last one. But I've also added, if they stopped existing, I would not notice, because some of these characters, I that's how much I don't care about them. At least if I dislike them, it's like I still think that they exist and I have a reason on why I don't like them. But for these characters, it's like they didn't really captivate me like at all. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start with Poppin' Party, which is the main band that we are first introduced to. If I'm not mistaken, Poppin' Party was the first conceptualized band ever. And it's because the creator of the whole franchise saw Kasumi's voice actor's performance somewhere that he came up with the idea of Bang Dream. So we do follow a lot of Poppin' Party. Season 1 was revolved all around Poppin' Party. Even in Season 2 and Season 3, when they weren't really the focus of the story, we do see a lot of their perspective, even though it has nothing to do with anything. And because of that, I do not like Kasumi. I don't think that she is a good main character, mostly because her problems and struggles, I feel like, aren't interesting to watch. I didn't really care about the formation of Poppin' Party. I feel like everything happened by chance. It was, like, really lucky for her to, to succeed. I feel like she didn't really put in any effort or anything it's just like oh yeah it's an anime don't think too much about it guys she's just gonna do wacky anime stuff i don't know i don't think she works as a main character and it's not that i hate kasumi i think she's a fine character she's fun to see every now and then but that's it she's supposed to be a side character we shouldn't follow her entire journey because she's just not that interesting and because they try so hard to make her the main character that just like I don't know, it just annoys me so much that I dislike Kasumi now. But what about the rest of Poppin' Party, you might ask? Well, for a majority of them, I just, like, I think I am neutral with Saya because I think Saya is pretty cool. Like, she runs a bakery with her family and she has, like, siblings and stuff. And I think Remy is pretty funny with the whole Chuckle Corne thing. But I think Arisa is, like, the funniest out of all of them because she is, like, the, the straight man to, like, all of the comedic jokes that Kasumi sets up. And I like how, like, she She's the, like the most normal person ever and she's pretty relatable. It's like, oh my god, Kasumi is doing this wacky thing again. I do ship Kasumi and Arisa, but I honestly don't care that much about it. What about Tae? I don't know why, but I don't think about Tai. She has a rabbit, but aside from that, I don't care. I don't think I own a single Tai card in Bang Dream. No, that's wrong. I do own a single Tai card, and it's from the Railgun collaboration. So that was a free card. I don't have any other three-star card of Tai. I think it's cool that she and Ray are friends, but aside from that, like, don't really care that much about it. Anyway, moving on. Let's go with Afterglow. When I first started playing Bang Dream, and I was looking through all of the character profiles i was like wait i feel like i've seen this girl before and it is the hentai haven girl i think that image was circulating around on twitter and instagram back when it first showed up and i didn't realize it originated from bang dream and after i started playing bang dream and i read the character stories and anything i don't really think that much about ran i mean she's okay i thought she would have so much more presence i suppose in the whole story and everything but after glow barely show up in the anime even in like the events story I don't really care that much about Ron's perspective. Every time I read like the mini 4 comma or 1 comma comics that are available in the game, they always mention that like Yukina and Ron have this sort of rivalry going on, but that's never really shown in any of the event stories that I've seen, and it's not even brought up in the anime or anything like that. So Ron is just like this character that could be interesting to me, but I feel like they don't really do anything about it. But it really did surprise me when I found out that Ron's voice actor is Ochako, which blew my mind because Ron does not sound like Ochako at all. And recently I watched uh, one of the isekai named Tsukimichi, and one of the main characters voice actor was Ron's voice actor, and you can see the types of voice that she can do and like her voice actor is really really talented and i think that's awesome let's go on with mocha i think mocha belongs in the hakanai territory i was debating on whether i should name it hakanai or <laughs> but i think hakanai is more apt 
especially because it is such like a memeable thing in the community and yeah i don't know i like mocha mocha is pretty funny i like the way her voice actress delivers her line i think it's really impressive how mocha's voice actor is able to sing in mocha's voice because they are able to sing in their normal voice also <laughs> I just like Mocha. Mocha's pretty funny. I have a lot of Mocha cards. I really wanted Black Cat Mocha from the Halloween gacha, but I did not get her. Anyway, let's move on with Himari. Um, yeah, if Himari stopped existing, I would not care. I thought Himari was interesting, but turns out I didn't really like Himari. Same goes with Tomoe. I think, like, a lot of the focus that Tomoe could have gotten all went to Akko because Akko is the more interesting one because Tomo is just like this cool girl who did taiko drumming as a kid. I feel like that's the whole thing with Afterglow. It's like they sound like an interesting band but when you think more about it they are just a group of childhood friends and there's not a lot of story that you can immediately come up with. You really need to think about the types of storylines that you can do and at the end of the day they don't show up a lot in the anime. They do show up sometimes in Garupapiko but I don't remember a lot of Afterglow-based stuff. Ron and Mocha ate ramen that one time, but that's all I remember. As for Sugu, I was debating on whether or not putting Sugu in Hakanai territory or like territory. But at the end of the day, I don't know enough about Sugu to put her in the Hakanai. I like looking at Sugu. Sugu is definitely a girl boss. She is the student council president. She practices extra hard in Afterglow because she thinks that she's not talented, so she puts in way more effort than everyone else. And then she's also running her parents' cafes. That's such a cool character to just exist. All right, next up we have Kokoro. All of Hello Happy World are like this really chaotic, energy feeling kind of band. And this is actually my friend's favorite band. This was one of the bands that interested me the most, mostly because they had a giant bear as one of their members. And I was like, why do they have a bear? That's really interesting. I thought I would like Masaki a lot more, especially because she serves a similar role to Arisa. But at the end of the day, I'm kind of neutral with Masaki. She's all right, I guess. She's funny sometimes, but if she's by herself, she kind of gives off this like no energy, tired kind of vibe. But she does have a whole personality that I did not explore, mostly because I skipped all of Hello Happy World's band story because I really did not care about this band. Speaking of not caring if... If... Oh my god, what's her name? If Croquet Girl stopped existing... Oh my god, I, I don't remember her name. I'm so sorry to fans of Croquet Girl. I just... I just don't care about them. They don't do anything. I think they're part of a sports club, but I think that's it. Same goes with Jellyfish Loving Girl. I thought that she would be way more interesting, but... She feels like she has the same vibe as Remy, but Remy is just like more memorable because she's in the show more. Jellyfish Loving Girl does just doesn't do much, so yeah. For Kaoru, you would think I would put her in the Hakanai territory because she's Hakanai. But actually, she's kind of neutral. I mean, like, I don't mind her. She's okay, I guess. I think she's entertaining sometimes, but... Watching her do her Kaoru antics gets old after a while, so yeah, sorry about that. Wait, I just realized Michelle and Misaki are separate entries. I guess they're both in neutral. I just assume that they're the same character. Let's put Kokoro in the Hakanai territory because at first I did not like Kokoro, but it's because she is so chaotic. And you know that because this is just an anime or a game franchise that you have this like suspension of disbelief where she does all this wacky stuff just because she's rich and it's really, really entertaining to watch, especially season two, episode four or episode three, I believe, where Michelle gets like an Iron Man suit provided by Kokoro and I thought that was really awesome. And because... Kokoro provides a lot of entertaining moments, and I have a lot of Kokoro cards, unfortunately. I have to put her in Hakanai. I just see her so many times, and I just love her every single time. But she is not top 3 though. Top 3 blocks of 3 very special people. Next up, we have Pastel Palettes. Like how Aya is not even the first one. She's too nervous, so Hina's taking charge. How do I feel about Hina? At first... I didn't really like Hina, she was just like, there, I guess. I didn't know her whole shtick was, she said Rune a lot. But now that I've like actually paid attention, I think 
Hina is neutral. She's fun sometimes, but a lot of the good interactions with Hina involve Sayo, and I think Sayo is just a much more captivating character than Hina. I feel like they could have done a lot more with Hina. The only event story that I remember is that Pastel Palace was going to have like a handshaking event where fans can come in and meet the members of Pastel Palace for like a minute or something or shake their hand. And Hina didn't understand why people wanted to do this. And after meeting a lot of people, she realized that she was special to everyone else. Hina is the weird person. But to Hina, everyone else is weird except her. And I thought that was like an interesting enough storyline. But because it is a band story, it is very, very short. So there's not a lot you can do with that. Also, I just found out Hina's voice actor is Shangling's voice actor in the Japanese dub of Genshin Impact. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and put Eve. I don't like Eve. I don't know why. She is Bushido. But like, aside from that, she doesn't have a lot going on with her, guys. Yeah, she says Bushido a lot, but that doesn't make it entertaining all the time. She's cool to see, I suppose, but I don't want to see her, like, all the time. I feel like it's unfair to put her in the dislike category, but with the amount of character potential that everyone in Pastel Palettes have, I feel like Eve has the least amount, and that just makes me feel that the creators had, like, an idea for everyone except Eve. So that's why I put her in dislike because like they could have done Eve so much better. They just dropped the ball, I guess. And next up, we'll have Maya. I was going to put Maya in the neutral territory, but the more I thought about it, the more I really enjoy looking at Maya's antics because she is this sort of instrument nerd. You would think that she would get shunned by the rest of the members of Pastel Palettes, but all of them recognize her talent and her skill. And even though she's a bit quirky, all of the members of Pastel Palettes are a bit quirky, so they, they accept her. And she has this whole character arc of she was just like this random nobody and overnight becomes like this idol. But later in one of the event stories, Maya sort of steps up as a senpai and is determined to lead her kohai on how to become a proper idol and stuff because she didn't know what to do. But she has all this experience and she wants to help out people who are in a similar position to her. And I thought that was really cool. Like, interesting storylines can really help elevate how much I like a character. And a lot of these guys, I just like, they don't get any event stories. Or maybe they do, but I just haven't seen them. Next up, we have Chisato. I don't like Chisato. I will admit that she is a very interesting character with a lot of layer and depth to them where... When you first look at her, you think that she's like this perfect Ojo-sama type of character. But in actuality, she's a very hard worker. But I don't know, I just I just don't like Chisato. Also, it blew my mind that Chisato's voice actor is Nagatoro's voice actor. So let that sink in for a minute. Last but not least, we have the leader of Pastel Palettes. I am gonna put her in the Kira Kira Doki Doki tier because Aya is a motherfucking girl boss. She has a part-time job. She has been training to be an idol for three years before she's finally handed the opportunity to be in Pastel Palettes. And even though all the producers told her to lip sync to the song, she still tries to put effort to try to learn and be able to sing properly without using lip sync. Even though the band was going to break up, she's the one who put it all together. She handed out flyers during a fucking rainstorm. And it's just like she put in so much effort. And she still has her flaws. Like that's the thing. Just because she overcame like an arc and became the leader or anything, she still has flaws, she has trouble ad-libbing on stage and stuff. You get to see her growth, but you see that she has more room to grow and stuff. This is why I put her in the Kira Kira Doki Doki pile because I is cute, I like her voice actor. She has a catchphrase! <laughs> But I, I don't know why, I really like Aya. The thing with Pastel Palette is that you could imagine a whole season of an anime based around them. Let's say for the first three episodes, we get the formation of Pastel Palettes and how they received backlash over the whole lip syncing thing. And in the next three episodes, we can see that they are still receiving some backlash, even though it has waned a bit. And Aya is trying to think of something to do to show their new determination and to show they have changed or something. And in the next three episodes, could focus on the other characters except for Aya because Aya has been getting a lot of the spotlight. And then the last three episodes would be like they perform this big show and they have a lot of fans. And in season two, they are already professional idols at this point. Maybe a year or two has passed. And we see that they have all matured and stuff. And it's kind of like a zombie land saga kind of thing. You can see like a whole storyline being written out for Pastel Palace because that's how interesting the concept of the band and each of the characters are. Like you can do a lot with it. And I hope that I see more of Aya and Maya 
in the future. Next up, we have my favorite band. We have Roselia. Now, when I first started the game and I didn't know about any of the characters, this band immediately intrigued me because of their gothic style. And I really, really love that. Let me just say, everyone is at least in the like territory. There is no one I feel neutral about. Let's start with Yukina. You would think that Yukina is in the Kiro Kiro Doki Doki style, especially because I like cats and I think Yukina is really, really cool. But actually, Yukina is just at the like. She was one of my favorite characters, but after watching a lot of the band stories and stuff she has since fallen off because there are other characters that I enjoy seeing more within Roselia. One example of this is Lisa. Lisa is in the Kira Kira Doki Doki pile. I don't know why I just like Lisa. Lisa is like the glue that holds all of Roselia together. Like I know Yukina's like the leader but Lisa is literally the heart of Roselia. If they didn't have Lisa Roselia could very well not exist. One of the event stories was like don't leave me lisa when you see that title it's like oh no does lisa want to stop being in the band because she's too busy or something then when you actually read it it's literally just like clickbait because lisa was like hey guys i can't join today's band session because my boss asked me to go into work i'll try to make it but maybe i'll be like an hour or two late so if you guys could wait for me i would really appreciate it and then during this one practice session where lisa is not there everyone's like oh my god she's gonna leave rosilia what are we gonna do and then everyone almost has a huge argument and breaks up the band and then lisa was like hey guys sorry i'm late it's like why are you guys all crying and they're like lisa please don't leave me and then yukina was like i'm gonna write a song to show you how much i appreciate you lisa so don't leave roselia and I thought that was like really cool. Lisa has a lot of stuff going on for her. She's like, my, my childhood friend has been sad this whole time and I want to do stuff to try and make him feel better. She has her own friend circle in school and she has her own hobbies of like baking and like knitting and stuff. And not only that, she goes to dance club. So she's also like a part-time dancer and she has a part-time job. So she's juggling a bunch of these things. And despite that, she is still putting a lot of effort in practicing as Roselli is the basis. So it's like, oh my God, Lisa, Lisa's such a girl boss, bro. Lisa's a fucking girl boss. Speaking of girl bosses, let's put Sayo in Hakanai. I really, really like Sayo because Sayo has like this whole fucking character arc that's really enjoyable to watch because at first she has like this strained relationship with her sister that's mostly because of her inferiority complex but then she learns to accept herself through the help of Roselia and her other friends so it's like it's really cool to watch and also I like Kuda Harusan. Kuda Harusan is very very funny and entertaining. If I like their voice actor, I probably like their character too. As for Akko and Rinko, I'll, I'll put them in the like category I guess. At first I really liked Akko but after after a certain point, she kind of gets like, yeah, you know, she does the same thing over and over again. And like, you know, you kind of get bored with it. But I will admit she's still very entertaining when she is on screen. And with Rinko, I feel like Rinko should just be paired up with Akko because come on, how can you not pair up Rinko and Akko? For the record, I ship Yukina and Lisa, but I do also think it's very valid to ship Lisa and Sayo. So in the end, it's all up to Lisa whether or not she wants to go with Yukina or Sayo. But in my personal opinion, I like Yukina and Lisa better. But I can see how you would think that Lisa and Yukina are just good friends because Lisa does act more of like a mother figure within the group. And I think Lisa and Sayo have more chemistry with each other. So yeah, that's uh, that's my stance on the whole shipping thing. Next, we have Morphonica. Let us put everyone in the if they stopped existing, I would not notice here because I do not care about Morphonica at all. However, I would like to mention that the violinist voice actor I have seen on YouTube before she made it into Band Dream. And after she made it into Bang Dream, I realized that before getting in, she did a lot of covers of Bang Dream songs, and I thought that's really cool. <music> Moving on with Ross, which is my second favorite band. So Roselia's first, Ross is second, and then we have Castle Palettes. Let's put Layer in the dislike territory. It's not that I hate Lair. She could have been way more interesting, but I feel like a lot of the focus is put on Choo Choo and Pareo and masking and Raka and like Lair is just like existing in the background. It's like, whoa, there's all this drama going on. I'm just gonna hang out with Tae and I'm like, all right, 
good for you, I guess, Layer. So I feel like they could have done so much more with Layer's character. And I think her voice actor is way more cooler than Layer herself. And I feel like that's a sin because for a lot of the anime, we see Layer the character instead of Rachel the voice actor who is pretty fucking badass. Take that what you will. Um, Raka is the third member of the Kira Kira Doki Doki squad. I don't know why I love Raka so much. I love that one scene in season two, I believe, where she takes off her glasses and then like she ties up her hair or something and she just whips out the guitar and starts fucking rocking that thing and everyone's like, holy fucking shit, Raka is so awesome. Yes, Raka is awesome. I love the little accent she has. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I really like Zombieland Saga is because all the members have accents, so. The more you know, I suppose. I pulled for her in the Halloween banner, and I got it within 20 pulls, so I was really happy about that. I think she's really cute, she's really awesome. I think it's interesting to see her in Season 2 before she joined Ross, because when I initially watched Season 2, I was like, oh, it's that girl from Ross. This is her story of how she entered the band and stuff. But in actuality, she actually hasn't joined the band yet. She was just a new character who is not in any band, but is looking to be in a band. If you think about all of the events that happened within the anime through Raka's perspective, you're like, holy shit, this girl is really lucky because she moved from the countryside, it's in Tokyo, and then she starts working at like this music venue, and she's like, man, I really like this indie band named Poppin' Party. And then you go to school, and you meet the main vocalist sister and then the sister's like yeah you want to meet my sister and you're like hell yeah please i want to meet all of pop and party and then all of pop and party's like yo raka you're such a cool girl and she's like oh my god and they're like you want to join our band and she's like i can join pop and party but being a true fangirl she's like no no i can't join pop and party you guys are like this perfect image and i don't want to ruin the image by inserting myself into it which is kind of like that one storyline in the second season of zombie land saga so i guess there's just a lot of things about zombie land saga that i like that are also in bang dream raka is just literally one of the best guitarists in all of tokyo or something and i think that's awesome uh choo choo just immediately saw her performance like we need her we need her right now. Pario, do whatever the hell you can to get Raka. If we talk about Raka, I guess we need to talk about masking. Um, I'll put masking in the neutral territory. I think they are a good character. I just, I don't know. I, I thought their like line deliveries aren't that great. Maybe the voice actor isn't like used to voice acting or something, but I don't know. Maybe it's the voice director, but there's just like something off about Masking's line delivery. I do like seeing Masking's interactions with Raka. I do think they are awesome. I shipped Masking and Raka. I thought it was really funny when it sounded like Raka was gonna confess her feelings to Masuki. I think Masuki looks really, really cool. I was really happy that her Halloween card was a free card because holy shit, that looks awesome as hell. If their voice actor could do better, that would be great. Last but not least, we have Choo Choo and Pareo. Out of these two, um, I like them equally. I think Choo Choo is like this really interesting character. When I first saw her in like the all the character previews, I'm like, I like this man. This girl is wearing like headphones with cat ears. That's awesome. I love cats. And then in the context of the universe of Bang Dream, it's really funny because she is literally like 12 or 14 years old. So like her thought process is very childish. And that's why she named her band Raise a Swillin. She's like, yeah. I'm gonna name my band Raise a Swillin because it means like lifting up the curtain because we're gonna like make a new impact in the world of girls band or something. And you're like, wow, this is such an edgy 14 year old kind of thought process, you know? And she's like, when I'm gonna make my band, everyone is gonna get like a cool nickname. Like instead of being Choo Choo, like C-H-U dash C-H-U, I'm gonna be C-H-U exponent two, cause Choo Choo, and you, Leona, you're gonna be called Pario because you hate your old self and you want to dress up and become like this kind of new person. So Pario means like facade or something. And you, Ray, layer, I guess, because you have lots of layers or something? Like, I don't know about that one, Chief. And masking, it's like you're putting on a mask because you actually go to this rich girl's school and you actually want to run wild. So it's like you're putting on a mask. And then you have Raka. It's like, we're gonna name you Locke, like a key. And I'm just like, 
Everyone else, I can sort of see where you got the origin of their name, but really, Raka is Locke? Is it because like she's like the final piece that locks in Ross as a band or something? But I don't know, I like how Choo Choo has like this really childish mentality. It's funny to watch. I also like how she has a lot of depth to her character. Unfortunately, it was only revealed near the end of season three. I do wish they sort of sprinkled a little bit more within the beginning of season three or at the end of season two. I thought she was one of my favorites, but Raka just came in and took the spot so nothing I can do about that. And the last member we have is Pareo. I like Pareo. Pareo is also 14 or 12. I don't remember her age and I think her interactions with Choo Choo are really funny but most of all I like how she is a fan of Pastel Palace. Thank you for including a simp within the, the roster of characters. She changes her hair color which is I feel like is revolutionary because a lot of anime characters they don't switch their clothes, they don't switch their hairstyle, and everything is kind of the same. But not Pareo. Pareo changes her hair depending on the occasion. Choo Choo wants an outfit with a black and white color scheme. I'm gonna change my hair to black and white too. Oh, our color scheme is different this time? I'll change my hair color too. Oh, Pastel Palace is having a concert. Hmm, I want to stand Maya today. So I'm going to put green and purple or something. So it's like, it's fun that she changes up her outfit. And I love that she carries jerky all the time. And there's this one character interaction between Pario and Hina during the Halloween event where Hina's like, Hey, Leona-chan, trick or treat. And Pario's like, I don't have any candy to give you. And Hina's like, well, I just, I'm just looking for a snack. And Pario's like, I have some beef jerky, but... But it's Choo Choo Samas. I, but it's Hina. So it's like, I'm sorry, Choo Choo, but I'm going to give this beef jerky to Hina. And Hina's like, I don't know why you're so conflicted, but thanks for the jerky, Pario. And she like fucks off or something. And I thought it was really entertaining. Pario is cute because every time you watch like the MVs, both IRL and like the in-game or like anime MVs, like she's always like bouncing around on the keyboard. She has like this really high energy. And I especially love like her character arc that is uh, brought up and resolved in season three. I thought that was a really good. Season three was just like a really good season of Bang Dream. It is probably the best season of Bang Dream. And yeah, it just involved a lot of the Ross members. I guess that's it for this video. I talked about a lot of the characters and the runtime is only about 30 minutes long. So it's not even that bad. If you guys disagree with my rankings, please leave a comment down below. Comment on why you love Croquet Girl. Jellyfish Girl, Morphonica, and these guys. And tell me why I'm wrong for sending Aya, Lisa, or Raka. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.